All right, what is going on guys? So today we are gonna be continuing the Golang and Svelte saga that we've been doing for the past, I don't even know how many videos at this point. And today we're gonna be doing the CRUD operations for the backend. So we're gonna be writing all the Golang API routes that we need to create, read, update, delete, etc. all of our different to-dos. The routes are right here. We're going to be going through the code on these. I'm not gonna be doing like a detailed tutorial and writing them on the video here. It's more just gonna be going over some of the intricacies of them and some of the weirder parts of them so that you you have the information you need to then go download this and actually use it yourself and you know get something out of it so before we get into the code i do want to call out real quick i have started a discord for this channel i think this is something that's kind of necessary at this point as i've been growing i've had more and more comments and trying to keep up with talking to people in the comments and going back and forth on all these concepts it's just getting to the point where it's unsustainable as it scales so i think it's better to move all of that to the discord if you guys are interested in that for svelte go back end for all that different stuff make sure you you guys join i have the link down in the description and with that out of the way let's get into the actual video so the first thing i want to talk about is what we're actually using here so obviously for our back end we're using golang as the language and we're using fiber as the framework for those of you who don't know fiber is generally speaking my favorite golang framework i've got videos on why the question that i had was what do we want to use for the database layer a few days ago i put out a video about orms whether or not you should use them whether or not they're worth it and today we're going to be using something that i think is a little bit on the in-between so we're going to be using what's called sqlx sqlx is a Golang package that gives us a bunch of extra things to work with our SQL and I think it's a really great package and I've really loved working with it. So before we get into the actual code, I first want to sort of talk about my thoughts on what I've implemented here and this sort of stack I've been using. So far, this stack has been extraordinary. I have really enjoyed working with it and you'll see today the database stuff we did, the data layer itself and the way the handlers and all this stuff is structured is really, really great to work with. Getting this set up was admittedly kind of painful. It was tricky figuring at how all this should go, getting at learning FX and doing all this stuff was really annoying. But now that it's here and I have this baseline to work with, it's really, really, really pleasant to work with. And I think SQL X is a really great way to work with the database. And I think for the coming months, that's actually what I'm going to be using for my data layer. So with those sort of thoughts out of the way, let's look at the actual code. To start, I want to show you guys how we're actually connecting to our database. I know this isn't super important, but we're converting from Postgres to MySQL. So here, what we're doing is we're just creating a SQL X connection. And then within our main.go uh, file, we're actually gonna provide this to our FX instance. So if you haven't seen the previous videos in the series, make sure you go back and watch the FX video. That will give you a lot of context on what we're doing here. But effectively what we're doing is we're just providing this uh, SQL connection to our apps that we can use it in a bunch of different places. So with that SQL connection, we are now able to implement all of the different methods we need here. So I'm not gonna focus too much on the handlers themselves. These handlers are very basic and generally speaking what you would expect. Um, right here we have like our complete to-do handler. So what this will do is it will go into our to-dos table. It will mark whichever one we pass in, whichever ID we pass in is completed and so on and so forth. There's really nothing too crazy here. It's just getting our session header out, which is how we're actually authenticating the user. I have a video on the session authentication from a couple weeks ago. And then we also go down here, we get our session and then we pull out the ID and then we go ahead and call this storage.complete to do. I'm not going to show you that yet, but that is going to be the crux of this video. So all we're really doing here is we're just doing the basic stuff for the API and that's not really the point of this video. The most important thing that I'd love to point out here is going to be the documentation stuff I'm doing here. This I think is worthy of its own video because this is something that is so important. I've been using this at work and what this can do is you can go through and add this to your API routes and it'll spit out this automatically for you. So right in here we have this complete to do Godoc and it is for the route to do's ID. And then if you look right here, we have that right here, this put to do's complete ID. We get documentation for that right here and it gives us everything we need to learn. It, it gives us everything we need to document our API automatically super easily. So that's going to be a video on its own, but I wanted to call that out and show you guys that this is a thing you can do. And it's something that, especially if you're working in a setting where you have separate front end devs, then if you have a separate front end and back end team, your front end devs will thank you for this. I've been using this at work in my nine to five and it is, it's been a godsend for the projects we've been doing. So make sure you guys look into this, but I'll have a video on that soon. 
So getting into the sort of meat of this, let's look at the actual storage directory. So within our to-do storage, this is where we're going to be doing our CRUD operations using SQLX. So SQLX is a Golang package, like I said, for using raw SQL, but it gives you some extra methods on top of the basic database slash SQL package that are super, super useful. Two methods that I really want to call out that are unique to SQLX that are super, super useful are the get method and the select method. So one of the things I talked about in my ORM video was that when you're writing raw SQL, it can be painful to have to deal with the dot scan method. So what you would have to do if we weren't using this select method right here is we would have to manually go through and iterate over all of the different rows that are returned from this. And we would have to select them out and manually manually pull them into a struct and do all this different stuff. It's not the most painful thing in the world, but it's a lot of boilerplate and it adds up over time. But what SQLX gives us is these two extra methods, select and get. The documentation is going to be linked below and I highly recommend you give it a read. There's a lot of intricacies to it that I'm not going to be able to get to here. But the gist of it is the select method will allow us to read multiple rows into an array of structs or a slice of structs, sorry, we're in go. So into a slice of structs right here. So I just create this empty slice of structs. I pass in a reference to that empty slice of structs into the select method. So what that will do is now the select method can just take the resulting data out of this query and just put it into this array of structs. So there's no boilerplate, there's no scan method, and we basically get the best of both worlds here. We get the effective static typing of using an ORM because we're typing the query here. And what's nice is if it doesn't match, the fields don't match to anything within the struct, it'll throw an error. Again, read the documentation for some of the nuances to that, but this is a super powerful thing that makes working with an ORM working with raw SQL a lot more pleasant. And I think this might be the sort of sweet spot for data layer stuff in Golang. And this is what I'm going to be doing going forward. So, and then down here we have the get one to do, and this is a showcase of get same principle, except instead of passing in a slice, we just pass in one. So these two methods are really extraordinary and, and they make SQL X one of the best ways, in my opinion, to work with a database in Go. Again, I got a lot more to do with this, but this is a really, really great way to do things. And then of course, down here, we just have the complete to do, which is just executing update and then the delete, which is executing delete. So there's nothing too crazy here. You know, again, we're not really we're not breaking new ground. This is a CRUD app. But what I really want to illustrate is the different ways you can do things. And I really wanted to build out this example project structure for you guys so that at the end of this, we have this fully built out go back end template and we have this fully built out Svelte kit front end template that you just have ready because the worst part of doing all of this was getting it set up. The worst part was figuring out, okay, how do I get the documentation to work? How do I link up the storage? How do I set up the FX? How do I do all that? But now that we have this baseline, if I wanted to add a new set of handlers for, say we wanted to add in like uh, groups to this, we wanted to allow users to form groups and share to do's between their groups. We could just create a groups handler, create group storage, we create their instance methods and then we pass them into FX and then we can just go ahead and link all their roots up here. That's really easy to do and it's super, super scalable. It'd be super easy to add a hundred new roots to this. I mean, your main.go would get a little longer, but it's not the end of the world. This isn't particularly hard to read or complex code. So the scalability on this is fantastic. The readability is fantastic and the maintainability is fantastic. We have these storage methods, which are very testable. If you wanted to set up a mock database as you scale up your app, we have our handlers over here, we, which are well documented and easily able to scale up in that way so that we get this beautiful documentation page and we're able to work with the SQL in a highly performant way, which I had been told this is the idiomatic way to do it. And I'm still, still need to get a full list of what all the true idiomatic go things are that you need to know and learn, but this does seem very, very good. I think this does beat out an ORM in my opinion, but we need to see how this scales up to a bigger project. So hopefully all that makes sense. The last thing I'll do is I'll show you guys how this works in action. It's really simple. We can just, we have our get method to get all the to do's. This of course matches the structure of what we would get within our documentation here. So our get to do's will return an array of to do's just like this. And we get that right here. And then we could get a specific to do. So we pass in an ID of one and we're just going to get this one. We can go ahead and complete this. We go ahead here and then that's a put request. We complete it. Bang. We've completed that guy right there. We can go ahead and get this guy again and it will work. All of this is good. And if you want proof right over here, I have my database table 
the completed just switched over to a one, which in my sequel is true. They just use a tiny int for that. So it's completed, it all works. Uh, for those of you who have been asking, this is Table Plus, my database client. I highly recommend this. I'll probably do a video pretty soon going over my tools and how I set up my Golang development environment and all that stuff. It's get again, setup is just such a painful thing with all this stuff and it's a it's a hurdle that you don't think about and it's something that a lot of people just don't even talk about because it's such a, you know, and once you have it set up, you don't think about it anymore, but I totally get back when I was new, this was a really painful thing to figure out. So table plus, I highly recommend you get the table and then I can go ahead and, you know, uh, execute raw SQL so I can test my queries in here, make sure they work. And then I can go back in here and I can paste them into my storage methods. Hopefully all that made sense. Again, I didn't go too deep into the actual tutorial of building all of this. The code is linked down below as always. And I highly encourage you guys to download this and run it on your computer and try and figure it out for yourselves. The code itself is not too complicated. A lot of it is just in the structure. And if you look at the documentation for fiber, for SQLX, all that stuff, you'll learn a lot more and you'll be able to get deeper into it. So the weirdest things are, I have notes in the readme, but like you need to make sure that you have like a MySQL instance, a Redis instance, and I think that's it. So it's just those two, which is weird and annoying, but we'll have a video tutorial on how to set all this up in the future. But with all that out of the way, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Make sure if you guys are interested, you join the Discord link down below and have a great day.